We are going to continue our study of Science Chapter 4 today with Lesson 2, Marine Ecosystems. We have three objectives for today's lesson. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to list three abiotic factors that shape marine ecosystems. Describe four major ocean zones and describe five marine ecosystems. All right, you're going to come back and watch the study jam on aquatic ecosystems. So let's talk about life in the ocean for just a minute. Uh, within a marine ecosystem, there are abiotic factors and biotic factors. Remember, abiotic, no life, absence of life, biotic, living, living things. So the marine ecosystems are shaped by the abiotic factors like water temperature, water depth, and the amount of sunlight that passes into the water. And all of these are very important. You have trillions lots of bunch trillions of plankton that live in the ocean plankton are these microscopic tiny organisms that float near the surface of the water and I said something they are microscopic sometimes but not all the time so tiny little organisms that float near the surface of the water well, let's take a look at this water depth graph for just a second. And we see that we have different zones. Well, the temperature of ocean water decreases as the depth of the water increases. So the further you go down, the deeper you go, the colder the water gets. So that would be all the way down in the deep zone. And this is the bottom layer that extends from the base of the thermocline to the bottom of the ocean. And the temperature in this zone averages about 2 degrees Celsius. It's pretty cold. And then above the deep zone, different word here, thermocline. Think about it climbing and you see it climbing here the thermocline is the layer of water that extends from about 300 meters below sea level so that would be here to about 700 meters below sea level and in this zone water temperature dro drops with increased depth faster than it does in these two zones. And you can see that depicted. It's going down. And then at the top, we have what is called the surface zone. It's the warm top layer of ocean water that extends down to about 300 meters below sea level. Sunlight heats the top 100 meters of the surface zone. And surface currents mix with the heated water, or they mix that heated water with the cooler water below. So there's a convection current that's going on. So just like we talked about before. All right, the different zones of the ocean. We have the intertidal, the narratic, the oceanic. In the oceanic, we have the benthic. So let's go back and break these down. So the intertidal zone, this is the place where ocean meets land. So the tide comes in. Ocean meets land. As you move further away from the shore into the nertic or nertic zone, the water becomes deeper. And you can see this and this image as it drops off. So in the intertidal zone where it meets the shore, you have seagrasses, 
periwinkle snails, uh, and herons, which is this bird, that are common. Sea stars and anemones often live on the rocky shores, while clams, crabs, snails, and conchs are common on sandy beaches. So that is the intertidal zone. The neritic zone, plankton are the major producers in this zone. Seaweeds are common too. You have sea turtles and dolphins that live in the neritic zone and other animals like coral, sponges, colorful fishes, all of these creatures. Uh, cr contribute to a vivid seascape. And you can see this tiny plankton and they've blown it up here. And as we learned with our food chain and our food web, plankton is very important. Okay, as we move on out, we have the oceanic zone. And this is where the seafloor just drops off. Think about in the movie Finding Nemo, which, by the way, we're going to watch that further uh, on in the week um, as educational purposes. And you will be able to distinguish all these different zones that you probably didn't know about or think about when you first watched the movie. But the oceanic zone, I mean, it just drops. Remember when they went to the edge? Okay, so as you watch the movie, be thinking about that. And then the very bottom of the ocean floor is called the benthic zone. And you can remember that because bottom starts with B and it's benthic, so bottom benthic. It is the deepest part of the ocean and absolutely no sunlight reaches it. None. So benthic bottom. So let's go ahead and talk about it since we're there. So you have organisms like bacteria, worms, and sea urchins, and all kinds of magnificent life out there that we've not even discovered yet. These things thrive on the deep sea floor, even without sunlight. And as we move up, we have the oceanic zone. Let's remember where it drops off. You've got many unusual animals that are adapted for the deep ocean, like whales, squid. Um, you can see the shark there, sea anemones. And then you have these fish that uh, glow, and they are found in very deep, dark water. It's called bioluminescence. If you've ever been to the aquarium, you've seen these jellyfish. So those are the ocean zones. So a little bit closer here. The intertidal area, remember that's found near the shore. So the tide meets the shore. It includes mud flats, sandy beaches, and rocky shores. It's coral reefs, these are found in warm, shallow areas of the narrative zone, and they provide homes for many marine animals and plants. Estuary, that's a cool word. This is an area where fresh water from rivers actually spills out into the ocean. And plants and animals must be able to survive in this constantly changing concentration of salt. So they're specially developed to do that. And then out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, there is this huge floating raft of algae. It's called the Sargasso Sea. <laughs> so it's not really a sea, but it's a sea of algae. And then polar ice. The Arctic Ocean and the ocean around Antarctica have icy waters that are rich in nutrients. And they have an abundance of fishes, birds, and mammals. And you learn this as you watch the videos uh, last week when we went to the Arctic. All right. 
you're going to log into Brain Pop and watch two Brain Pops and complete the quizzes on Oceans and Coral. And when you've done that, you have finished Lesson 4.2. Now, as I said earlier, we're going to watch the movie Finding Nemo over the next few days. And you're going to find that movie on the following slide. So this is how you'll get back to it. Um, you will also watch the Bill Nye videos after Finding Nemo later. So here is Finding Nemo. This is Bill Nye Wetlands. This is Bill Nye rivers and streams and then our next lesson will cover freshwater ecosystems.